Hi, I'm Charlie O'Brien. I'm here with Peter Vandervloot from the Agricultural Electronics Foundation known as AEF. So Peter, it's great to have you here today. Thank you very much. I so, appreciate it. Yeah. So everything in agriculture seems to be acronyms, right? So AEF, tell us, tell us a little bit about what is AEF? Yeah, AEF is the Ag Industry Electronics Foundation. So the word electronics already says it. It's all around electronics and standards and guidelines. So everything that we have with our uh, different manufacturers that uh, we have to define around communication between tractors and implements uh, is standardized in the past. And the AF has been working on uh, guidelines to offer compatibility checks um, regarding these communication protocols. Okay. So, so throughout the years I've heard the term ISOBUS. Yeah. And how does, how does ISOBUS fit into what AEF is doing? Well, ISOBUS is from the pre-AEF age. It is um, made up from engineers, a name that came up from the engineers that worked on the ISO standard, which is also known as ISO 11783. So that is the ISO working group defining the real standard under ISO um, uh, guidance. So the ISO is the International Standards Organization, and they made up this 11783 standard. Okay. Now, when the industry started to implement this standard in their products, we found these incompatibility issues in the end of the 90s, early 2000s. And that's where the industry started to worry. Um, besides that, the marketing guys picked it up as a new technology, and they started to use and, and uh, kind of name it ISOBUS as a marketing name, because obviously nobody would remember 11783. That's too technical. Sure, sure, that's right. So, so then... Um some of the things that, I, that I've read about in terms of like PlugFest. So PlugFest, you know, in my way of thinking is, you know, you put, you know, two components together and see if they communicate with one another. And I think you were just in Nebraska recently in terms of with the uh, PlugFest that we had there. Explain a little bit of what, what that's about and how AEF is involved with PlugFest. Well, actually, that, that was kind of nice because I was invited to come over to the Lincoln uh, Blockfest, and uh, we decided as AEF that it would be good to have at least a steering committee or uh, a representation in, in the form of the chair group re be present there. Uh, we've never been present as a, as a chair group, and we, we thought, well, it's good to show our face to the North American companies and, and be there, be around for people to ask questions about memberships and what we are doing. So that was a great experience. Um, I held a presentation during the dinner event regarding these plug fests and it all started back in 2001 when we, when we started with this ISOBUS standard. Um, that first plug fest was held in uh, Wageningen, by the way in the Netherlands where I'm, I'm residing as well, yeah. uh, Wageningen University and the general idea was that the technicians should come together with the uh, electronics and the software components, plug it together and that's where the plug comes from, plug fest. Yeah. And the second year we were in um, Germany at uh, DLG, and there in Germany you have this habit of, you know, this October festing when they drink beer. Absolutely. So the technicians <laughs> came up with this nice thought, well, let's call it a plug fest. We don't drink beer, but we plug the electronics together. and get drink it. beer after the plug fest. We drink fest, beer after the plug fest, <laughs> right. So we did in Lincoln as well. Yeah, good. So, so that's been very successful. And as I understand it, there's a lot of new activity that AEF has been working on. I know there's project teams that are out there. and Maybe talk about some of the new things that AEF has kind of embarked upon of late. Yeah, first maybe I should explain a little bit about our uh, status quo with the current products sure. because that's how I always present AEF. We have uh, been working five years now, six years already, on uh, products that we, we have ready and launched to the public, which is the database, which is the conformance test. Uh, which is the guidelines that we have on this plug fest. That's what I call our products, the AF products. Yep. And the, the, base, the basic teams, like the project teams one to five, as we call it, have been working on getting these products out right now and getting them released the, uh, the last couple of years. So during the years of development, we, we started to address new technology items, uh, things like wireless, things like high speed, communication, uh, more power need from the tractor to the implement, like the high voltage team, ISOBUS automation features, uh, tractor implement management as we call it. So we established new project teams with experts to work on these topics, uh, to work out new guidelines, to prepare them to become standards in the future, like high voltage standard, a new plug maybe to uh, 
um, to give a high power from the tractor to the implement, a uh, new plug to do high speed communication, or wireless e field communication. These are the new groups that we, uh, we have recently established uh, last year. Okay, so a lot, a lot of different things going uh, on. A lot of different here. things. Yes. So, so let me go back to this database once because that, that seems like something that's very different from an industry perspective. And maybe you could comment a little bit more on so, what is this database? How does it work? You know, who, who really should be using this database? Is it available uh, for everybody right now? Or what? You know, maybe a few words around that. Yeah, the, the AF database has been launched at the SEMA uh, show in Paris to the broader public. And with the broader public, we mean the, the farmers and dealers that, that can really use uh, the database to look up the compatibility between their components. So, now suppose a farmer has a, a, a tractor let's say, call it a brand green on the yard uh, right. with a certain terminal. He can look up the certification uh, information from that tractor in the database. Now, if he intends to buy an implement from a different brand and he wants to know if it's compatible, he can check the compatibility in the database. Uh, it's also a helpful tool for the salespeople, like key account managers from the companies. They come to the customer and they, they can show our implement is uh, certified and if you have a tractor on the yard, they can really show in the database what the compa compatibility between the two products is. Okay. So it's both for the uh, manufacturers themselves, for the salespeople, the service people. It's also for the dealerships, and they can advise their customers, but it's also really for the end customer. So and I, I just looked it up uh, before we, uh, we went into this interview. We have currently 2,500 uh, users already in the database since, oh, really? since the opening to the public, which is a very good uh, indication of the use of the users. Okay, so so that sounds really unique, Peter, in terms of being able to go in and look, actually, competitively, yes. you're able to look into a database that the industry's come together and said, hey, we want to put this, in, this information together so that customers or dealers have the ability to look into this database and say, hey, I'm going to have this piece of equipment, and I'm going to have this tractor or these tractors, and I want to make sure that they're communicating at the Correct. end of the day. And, 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 uh, they can do their some of their shopping beforehand. Basically. Yes, yes. So basically they're, that's they're, true. They're making sure that works. But there's a second purpose uh, behind launching the database. That is, uh, of course, we, we as industry try to get the products certified as much as we can according to the standard. But it can still happen that there's in the field a sort of a problem. Now we agree that once a problem occurs, that the service technician from either one of the brands comes to the machine combination. And they can diagnose the system and pull out the information and load it up into the database. So the common understanding is that the manufacturers that have this combination in the field where, where there is a problem, try to solve this problem from both sides. It's not like, no, it's uh, the deer or the echo uh, dealer that should solve it. No, we have a, a joint mutual interest to solve it and help the, help the uh, end customer out of, out of this problem. So manufacturers working together yes, absolutely. to, in fact, yes. make it a better process for yes. the customer yes. if there's a yes. situation. It's a there. service process as well. Oh, that's yes. excellent. So one more, one more question, Peter, and then we'll probably need to wrap it up, but in terms of the future. So AEF you know, started out with the ISOBUS and working on some of, the, some of the activities around that, and then there was project groups, and now I think 12 or 13 project, uh, 11 11 project, project groups at the moment, yes. right now. So a, a lot of expansion. Where do, where do you see it going? you know, over the next five to ten years? Yeah, that's a very good question, Charlie, and we, we've asked ourselves as a steering committee and the core members uh, the same question last year when we were meeting in, um, uh, actually in um, uh, Waterloo in, in the John Deere uh, facilities. Uh, where are we in ten years from now, or basically where are we in 2020? So we decided to, to set up a, a small program that we called Route 2020, uh, reason uh, behind that is also that Route 20 is a nice scenic highway from the East Coast to the West Coast in yeah. the US and it passes through Waterloo, as yeah. I'm well informed. We decided to call this program Route 20 and uh, we made a, a few workshops with the steering committee to ask ourselves where is AEF in, in, in this time period. And we think that AEF will grow further from uh, let's say the 175 plus memberships that we have today to probably somewhere between three and four hundred. Oh really? Wow. Yes, uh, that's the expectation and we want to extend all the products that we have within, uh, let's say, the new project teams that will deliver new products for high voltage certification or okay. uh, high speed ISOBUS communication, wireless communication, all these topics. 
we discuss topics like data management, which is a very hot topic. Yeah. By the way, we will be talking uh, together also on data management this afternoon, as I understood, right. Charlie. Uh, this is a hot thing uh, because data becomes the future for the farmer. With the data, the big data, he can manage his farm and his equipment and everything around it. And um, we've asked ourselves, where is AEF in this story? And uh, we are more on the electronic side, as you know, the equipment, the controls, right. the terminals, and we have our interfaces to the data management uh, solutions. So that is where we actively uh, cooperate with uh, uh, organizations like Ag Gateway uh, in uh, North America and also recently in Europe. But there's also other data management initiatives coming. Okay. Good. So we have quite some challenges in the next few years to uh, tackle. Yeah, but, but exciting challenges. Exciting yeah. challenges. And not only AEF, it's more like cooperating with other organizations. Yeah, yeah, for sure. We, cer we certainly at AEM you know, like to cooperate and appreciate everything that AEF has done. I, th I think that, um, Peter, we probably need to close, and I just want to make sure that our members and anyone that may be watching are aware of, obviously, what AEF is up to, but if somebody wanted more information, where would they go in terms of finding more information about AEF? Of course, we have our website, which is uh, aef-online.org. Um, uh, people can always contact the AEM staff because we get great support from uh, AEM uh, in North America uh, to do our, you know, our secretary work is is provided by AEM, uh, which is which is great support for the chair group and the steering committee. Uh, we have uh, support from uh, AEM in the North American market uh, regarding marketing and communication. But we also have a, a general um, secretary support in Europe where um, uh, they, can, they can approach us on a direct phone number. Um, we have one person uh, during the work days available in Europe that uh, can be reached by email and phone and will follow up um, immediately on membership requests or any other requests that we have regarding licenses. Good, good. Well, Peter, uh, thank you very much for coming today. Very much appreciate it. And look forward to what the next five years bring. So, uh, Peter and Charlie from AEM, and uh, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you, Charlie.